Hello and welcome to a new video about the magnetic field. We're talking about coils and inductance and so on, uh, and we're talking really long now about this. Uh, we now we know meanwhile how to deal with coils, uh, parallel circuit, series circuit, and so on. And today we want to discover how a coil inductance is behaving in a DC circuit. I've drawn here a DC circuit, so we have an ideal. Uh, voltage source here, DC voltage source, I have an ideal ideal coil yeah, and I have a switch. Yeah. And I imagine that at some point in time I close the switch. Yeah. And now, now we want to, to see what is happening in this point in time when I close the switch. Yeah. We know Lenz law, yeah, a coil is does want that the, the flux, the magnetic flux, combined flux, is constant. That's the goal of the coil. If this is not the case, the coil will react with a voltage at its ends. All right? So as soon as there is a voltage at the coil, yeah, it is a reaction somehow on the, on the change of flux inside the coil. And we have calculated law of induction that our UL equals L and we had we said the the change rate of the of the current we said it's delta I divided by delta T and then we made this infinitesimal change so we said okay if the deltas are all that tiny that it's unimaginable small but still there yeah then we're writing the differential quotient di to dt this means the coil that the voltage of the coil is a uh, uh, is proportional to the change rate of the current and now we're switching an ideal voltage source to an ideal coil. What will happen? Let's transform this. This means our current change, the change rate of our current, the I to the T, equals UL divided by L. If UL is constant, the change rate of the current is constant, so that the current will grow, 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 and grow, and will never stop growing. How can this be, huh? I think everybody knows that this is not happening. That the current is growing, 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 growing. But is the math wrong? No. It's not the math, it's the elements. I'm we are talking about an ideal voltage source and an ideal coil. This is not happening in real life. We don't have ideal elements, right? So if we now at least replace one element with a not ideal element, or with a model of a not ideal element, then we have, let's stay with our ideal voltage source. Here we have a switch. And now we are summarizing all resistance of all the things in one resistor, which we also pack into our loop here. Yeah. And so now we have an R, we have an L, we have still our switch, we have still our voltage source with our U0, yeah. we have still our UL here, we have still our current rushing through, our I. Huh? And these are elements. They don't know nothing about the world. They're just reacting. So the, the rule stays the same. So here UL equals still L times and the change rate of the current. Hmm? Law of induction is still valid here. But we have another element in here, and here we have a UR, and this UR, UR follows Ohm's law, which is, by the way, important, right? R times I. Huh? And now let's think again what is happening. 
in first point after turning on the switch. There is no current. So UR is zero. Yeah? UL tries to prevent the current from happening and is reacting with a UL. And this UL in first and first time, so at first moment after switching on, if UR is zero, so UL must be full U zero. Yeah? We have the full voltage here at L. So this means the full voltage will cause a change of the current. So the change rate of the current is now determined by this U0. As soon as the current is growing, we will receive a voltage at the resistance. So the UR is a little bit bigger than before. Before it was zero and then it's now a little bit bigger. If UR is a little bit bigger, UL must be a little bit smaller because all two together must be U0 and U0 is constant. So if now UL is a little bit smaller, the change rate of the current is a little bit smaller. If the change rate of the current is a little bit smaller, the current will not grow that fast. So our UR is still getting bigger, but not as fast. If UR is getting bigger, UL is getting smaller and the change rate of the current is getting smaller. So I is still growing, but not that fast. So UR is still growing, but not that fast, but still UR is growing. <laughs> A uh, uh, lowering UL and the change. So the change rate of the current will drop over time. Uh, and then in the end, uh, we will end up in a situation where there is enough current running that UR equals U0 and UL is 0. And as soon as we reach the state that the, the voltage at the, at the coil is 0, uh, we don't have any change rate of the current anymore and the current remains constant. And then everything is level. Every element is happy. Yeah. L, the only thing L did want is that the, the magnetic flux is constant. If the current is constant, magnetic flux is constant. There is no need to use any UL. So our, our coil is now behaving like a short circuit, like a piece of wire, simply. Yeah. There is no resistance at all. Yeah. And our resistance will take all the voltage. So UR has grown now to U0, so our resistance is limiting the current. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And so at first the grow rate of the current is pretty high, getting lower and lower and lower and lower, reaching then zero. Yeah, theoretically never, but practically yes, it's reaching somewhere zero and no change is done at all. And then we have a stable condition. So our coil in first time, in first time, it looks like it is reacting like it would, it would be open, right? It would be open. And after a long time, it is behaving like a piece of wire. Yeah. So this is the behavior of a coil in a DC circuit. With ideal elements, I cannot even, I cannot even model this. Yeah? So we are using this model, an RL combination, yeah. which in fact is always the case because if you think about a coil, it's manufactured by some material, by copper, for instance. Yeah? And a copper has a resistance, so it's always looking like that. Uh, so there are no ideal elements. Next time we have a look at how these RL combinations are behaving a little bit closer. Yeah? We have a look how the current is behaving, if we switch on, if we switch off, how the voltage is behaving, if we switch on, if we switch off. Uh, yeah, this we will have a look. And we also know which, which equations can be used to calculate the transitions between two states. Coil and DC circuit, yeah? Next time, a little more in detail. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.